Mr. Vice Chancellor. Upon the recommendation of the Senate of the University of Guelph, I have the honor to present to you Temple Grandin, the candidate for Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa. On the recommendation of the Senate of the University of Guelph, I am honored, Mr. Vice Chancellor, to present to you the candidate, Temple Grandin, for the degree of Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa. Dr. Temple Grandin is an inspirational leader who has revolutionized the field of animal science and whose extraordinary insight, understanding, and advocacy have benefited both animals and humans. A professor of animal science at Colorado State University, she focuses on animal welfare, neurology, and philosophy with accomplishments and achievements of extraordinary scope and impact. Her designs for livestock handling facilities are used worldwide. Her writings on the flight zone and other principles of grazing animal behavior have helped reduce stress on food animals during handling. Her inventions include a hug machine designed to calm people who are hypersensitive. She is also the best-selling author of seven books and has been widely published in the academic press. She has won numerous awards and been interviewed for news stories countless times. Most recently, her life was the subject of the HBO film Temple Grandin, which won five Emmy Awards. Dr. Grandin started life as a child diagnosed with autism with a family determined to beat the odds and a host of supportive mentors, teachers, and leaders. Her path has been full of breakthroughs, discoveries, and inventions that are most deserving of this honor today. In recognition of the international stature of her contributions as a researcher, mentor, and advocate, and the extraordinary impact she has had on our world, I ask you, Mr. Vice Chancellor, to confer upon Temple Grandin the degree of Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa. Temple, I'm sure that as you listen to that citation, you must be thinking, how did I fit all of those things into one life? How did I manage to do all of those incredible things that help not only the animals that we uh, live with and serve, but help people as well? Your accomplishments are truly inspiring. You have generated a whole series of people here who are in absolute awe of the things that you have done. And it is a great privilege and pleasure for me to bestow this degree upon you. By virtue of the authority of the Senate of the University of Guelph, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Science, honoris causa. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you. I'm really honored to, to be here today, and I just want to say it takes a lot of hard work. You know, when I first started out, um, you know, some of you may have seen the HBO movie, they um, did, really did put bull testicles all over my car because I had to break into a man's world, too. That wasn't easy. You know, it's just determination. You know, I'd have some of my problems, and the assistant manager of the Swift plant said, well, you just got to have perseverance. You just got to keep working on it. Now, in the very early work that I did with livestock, it was observation. I got down in the chutes to see the things the cattle were balking at. They refused to walk over a sunbeam. Maybe there was a chain hanging down. They saw a person walk by. You know, most people just react, well, we'll get a bigger electric prod out, and we're going to just shove them with an electric prod. Well, I found if you removed the distractions, then they'd walk through the chute. And it seems like something, it just seems so obvious. But sometimes the least obvious is the most obvious. And I want to really talk about the importance of observation in science. You know, you make an observation, and then you've got to do a scientific study to show observation really is real. Now, one thing that can really help things advance is to look across disciplines. I've always liked to, you know, I do autism stuff, I do animal stuff, I like to read neuroscience stuff, I like to read construction and engineering stuff. And you look at a whole lot of different things, 
You can look at things in different ways. Now, I'm a visual thinker. I think in total photorealistic thinking. I used to think everybody thought the same way I thought. And I was shocked to find out that other people thought differently. I'd ask them, think about a church steeple. I just see specific pictures. But I found that other people were seeing this vague, generalized thing. And then there's another kind of mind that's very good at mathematics. You know, these two kinds of minds need to work together. You know, I need somebody else to help me out on the statistics. But where I really can work well on a scientific study is on the methods, because I can visualize exactly how the experiment is being done. I'm, I, when I review journal articles, I mean, the methods section is where I go. And I go, you didn't put down what breed of pig you were using in that experiment? That could affect your results. Now, you've got to have those sort of things down. Other people are word thinkers. The different kinds of minds need to work together. Then we can really uh, do a lot of really great things. And just to finish up, um, <coughs> the kind of thinking I do, it's bottom up rather than top down. I take a whole lot of specific examples and put those specific examples together to form a concept. And I'm getting worried today that our educational system is sort of sidelining some of the mathematical thinkers and the visual thinkers. We need these people. I'm a child of the 60s and the 50s. Boy, we got stuff done. We went to the moon. We built the interstate highway system. And it worries me today that, we've, that just before the economy crashed in the US, we were sending our best and our brightest to you know, invent credit default swaps. That's not the sort of thing our best and our brightest ought to do. And at politics, that's turning into a big mess where it's all an abstraction. I don't want to get on the subject of American politics. I, ugh. <laughs> because what we need to be doing is getting back to doing real stuff. That's something that we're not doing now. You know, with huge amounts of money getting spent. How do you understand huge amounts of money, like the money that was used in the bailout? That was equal to two Toronto airports for every single state. And down at home, I say it's two Denver airports, Denver International Airport. You break it up into DIAs. Each DIA is $5 billion. Then you can start to understand this. We need to be getting back to doing real things. We're spending more money fighting over patents and suing over patents than we are inventing things. And I just want to end up and say, graduates out there, go out and do real stuff, real things, things that will really make a difference. Thank you.